Hey folks, please enjoy this clip from our show, which you can find every single day at 4 p.m. Eastern exclusively on Rumble. We've been doing the best shows we've ever done, completely free of censorship and on a platform that actually supports us. You can also support us on Locals where you can access a ton of exclusive content, movie riffs, as well as an archive of over a thousand full episodes going back as far as seven years. We've also teamed up with Merch Engine to bring you a new lineup of really awesome quality shirts, hoodies, and now even hats. So come check out our untested uncensored show on Rumble every single weekday at 4 p.m. Eastern. You stupid idiots. Uh, Wait, I'm not Jewish? No, no. no. Look how you live. Abstract poverty cannot yeah. never be Jewish. <laughs> um, None of us are Jewish. Uh -uh. Or they'd be mentioning us in the Dan Schneider stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, all that Dan Schneider stuff exploded, huh, guys? Longtime fans. Uh, yeah. You know, not, not you know even what a... they say when you're right early. It's just like being wrong. It's just like being wrong. Man, everyone's really talking about it, huh? Mm -hmm. We covered this stuff. For those that don't know, there's new people. That's kind of what blew our show up, was covering the Dan Schneider stuff. I actually remember what happened. I, I remember I was, I don't know where. I was, I was, I had seen some tweet, and then I, then I, I went through this whole, like, humongous, like, Reddit thread. That was people talking about all these like Dan Schneider rumors and allegations and this and that. I'm like, and I, and I I'm showing it to Mersh. I go, we should probably cover this. This is fucking crazy, right? So initially, it, the pe real it was it was it was two young like kids. Well, I want to say they were like in their early twenties. You know who tipped us to the Schneider shit? I'm trying to remember. Fucking Leaf. That's right. Leaf tipped us to the Schneider shit. We we went through like I, went, I remember going through this whole Reddit thread, and then I remember. Um, I remember like seeing th this, this, these two kids, I want to say kids, probably like 19, 20 years old, were talking about all these Dan Schneider allegations, this and that, and we really, we really went deep dive, uh, so much so that I remember that we, uh, we interviewed the black chick, one of the black, the black chick was on all that. Angelique Bates. We interviewed her. We interviewed somebody who we had confirmed did audition for the show, but you wanted to remain anonymous mm -hmm. for, for obvious reasons. And uh, they were both great. One of those interviews got us a strike. Mm -hmm. I don't remember which one. One of those interviews got us a strike. Of course. Of course it did. And, but that's what blew us up. And one of our videos almost had a million views at one point. Like, it was really close. Like, the pool party one, mm -hmm. almost had, like, a million views. Uh, it's so much so that we, we, got con we, we were contacted by, what was it? Was it Business Insider? Business Insider. And then I think one of the producers, too, from this this thing, they wouldn't tell us what it was, but they were like, hey, it was two people, I think. Yeah, separately. yeah, that's right. They were like, could you give us your sources? And, and we're, we're like, like yeah, yeah, we'll get back to you. Because we were going to get cut out. And and I know we were going to get cut out because they always do. Like, Yeah, and I'm not going to run and get your coffee for you. Well, yeah, you no. Fuck me over. And then all of those, we, we gained a lot of fans because then all those all those original videos that were on YouTube are gone when we lost our channel. Like we have the videos, by the way, they're on Rumble. But what I mean is, no one's gonna, no, nobody's gonna stumble across them on Rumble. Is is my point? You know, like you would on YouTube because the algorithm and shit like that. Uh, but yeah, we covered that and we pushed we pushed pretty hard. You know, I I, I even remember, didn't. Didn't you call? Didn't we call somebody and leave a voicemail too? We called. Uh, uh, we we definitely called uh, Nickelodeon. Itself. We called Nickelodeon. We left a voicemail. Remember they shut the phones down. Yeah, they shut the phones down for a couple of days because we were being really annoying. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, that's right. I do remember that. And then I think we called his agent too. We did call his agent. I remember calling that's his what agent. I'm saying we gotta get, we gotta get, we gotta go through because all we ever clipped were those interviews. We never clipped the funny stuff. Yeah, which is why I love to see me like to have Taper go back and find the funny shit we did because we did some really wild shit back then. Yeah, you called his wife's magazine. That's true. Remember, his wife had a cooking magazine. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, uh... <laughs> yeah. We were bad boys. Uh, sir. So, okay, yeah. So if 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 you do want to kind of see those videos and you're watching this or maybe listen to the podcast later um all the videos that were taken down on youtube are up because the first thing i did when i when i, when I made a rumble account was do it doesn't really work anymore but it did back then and you could just kind of like you could it, it just automatically imported your entire youtube channel so if you search for uh dan schneider and uh, revenge of the sis 
uh, on Rumble, you'll get all our videos. The, 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 they'll all come up. Uh, clips and the full videos and everything should be there. Uh, let's see. The, oh, fuck. I did the wrong. God damn it, Royce, you fucking moron. Sorry, I had the wrong thing pulled up. Uh, anyway, m my point is... Um, we got iced out, which is whatever, man. It's like, what are you going to do? It's, it's what happens to us all the time. And even though it's highly annoying, because this is the thing that made our show take off, which I think we both agree on that. This really blew our show up. And then just to be like, oh, yeah, no, not, not, we got strikes for it. And now everyone's talking about, it. oh, yeah, like we've known forever. All you motherfuckers ignored us. Yeah, let all these people cash our checks. It's fun. Yep. <clears throat> Anyway, it's actually a wire transfer. I uh, hear Hey, it's Boogie. I play T-Ball on Nickelodeon's iCarly. I got a chance to watch the Quiet On Set program, and I reached out to Dan to see if it was something that he'd be willing to discuss. I'm pleased to say... A friendly face... Uh, of, yeah, this is going to be a softball. A friendly face that used to work with him. Mm -hmm. Say that he said yes. Dan, how are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. Are you? Because you disappeared off the face of the planet when we put, pushed the screws on you fucking seven years ago, bud. Uh huh. Okay. Um, I really appreciate you reaching out and giving me the opportunity to talk to you about the. Looking great, Dan. What we saw over the last two nights. I'm sorry, but is a gentleman on the left some sort of space pimp? What, what's up yes. with that outfit? Okay. Uh, he's a black man who looks like he's been molested. Ah. I'm really glad. Uh -oh. By the guy oh. sitting across from him. Yeah. <laughs> That you're here because I believe this is important. For sure. Uh, we've got a lot of things to unpack. Um, but <sighs> before I dive into my list of topics that I'd like to discuss. Let me tell you about Athletic Greens. That's right, folks. Here, at, we're about to talk about child, this child potential, alleged kid dealer, but confirmed feet liker, Dan Schneider. Kid feet liker. <laughs> Oh, man, you know, it's like riding a bicycle. We haven't done it in a while, but you get right back into yeah. it, and it's really easy. It's, like, really easy. Is there anything you'd like to start off with? Absolutely. Watching over the past two nights was very difficult. Because they really barely mentioned the head of the class stuff. I wasn't head of the class, and nobody ever talks about yeah. that. Nobody ever talks about better off dead. No, nobody wants to talk about that. It's me facing my past behaviors. Which, which, by the way, ironically, is what Amanda Bynes is now. Facing his past behavior, so are you gonna, you're going to own some of this? You're going to own the stuff that's not going to end in any kind of criminal charges. Guys, Dom Lucas shared the hot tub video. <sighs> the one that we, you know, seven years ago that we covered? Okay. Um, some of which are embarrassing and that I regret, and I definitely owe some people a pretty strong apology. Let's talk about the massage. Oh. oh. Let's talk about okay. the massage. Watching we covered that, too, by the way. That, that entire doc, we covered everything in it the content yesterday it was disturbing it was wrong it was wrong that i ever put anybody in that position it was the wrong thing to do i'd never do it today i'm embarrassed that i did it then i apologize to anybody that i ever put in that situation and even additionally i apologize to the people who were walking around video village or wherever they happened because there were lots of people there who witnessed it who also may have felt uncomfortable so i owe them an apology as well yeah this guy's not going to get no pushback. Wow. Powerful stuff. Okay, next. And talk to me about the writer's room. From what I saw, not cool. No. Wait, we're going to talk about not yeah, being nice to your writers. Nobody gives a shit about your faggot writers. But this is what exactly how this is going to go. They're going to shift. <laughs> they're going to do a little sleight of hand, and they're going to be like, I did some things. The writers were unhappy. That's not what we I care about, Dan. I broke union rules. That's not what we care about, Dan. No, and I, I don't mean to cut you off, but if I can cut right to the chase, let me, let me just say, no writer should ever feel uncomfortable in any writer's room. I'm calling it right now because I think I just saw it. This, not only is this a softball interview, it is a highly edited interview. Highly edited, and Dan approved the questions because you see how quick he was to cut him. He cut the question off to answer it. I don't know this guy. Let me get right into that. Actually, you know, yeah. I'm glad you brought up the writers. You know, the writers. <laughs> you know what? You know what it sounds like. You know what it sounds like. You know when they when they used to have those infomercials where it looked like it was a talk show. Wow, 
making pasta at home. How does that work? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked, Karen. We use our proprietary, and you're like, wow, you just had that all lobbed well, up and ready to go. You know that answer, huh? But it, it feels it feels cut up. It feels like, I don't know who this guy from iCarly is. What's his name? Tebow Jenkins? Oh. Is that his name? Virgie, was his name Tebow? At Virgie, just do me a favor. Google Tebow Jenkins. Okay. Um, just tell me what comes up. Uh, but he, I thought it was Ryder from San Andreas, he, but I could be wrong. You could be wrong. Or Static Shock, WB superhero, oh. the black one. Might be so him. Google just called me a racist. Okay, oh. well, that's fair. Well. That's fair. Uh, search it in a Tor browser. Um, yes, search on Gab. Well, now it just called me a nigger. Yeah, well, now, okay, now we're <laughs> nowhere in the middle. You can't win. You go on Gab and everybody's a Jew. You go on Google, everybody's oh. a Nazi. I can't win. They're saying his name is Huckleberry Hound. I feel like that's not right. I think that's not right. Mm. I do Over. like his Farnsworth Bentley pants, though. Yeah, I know no, everything about him. He's amazing. Period. The end. Oh, no excuse. Oh, that's his name is iCarly Jim. Oh, <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Okay, um, Knob Dog's got it. It's Janarius McQuillan. It's Janarius McQuillan. That is the blackest name I've ever Most heard. Janarius McQuillan. Writers, comedy that sounds writers. like a running back. I'm taking him in fantasy. Oh, of course. Sight unseen. He's going to be amazing. Never even seen him play. <laughs> <laughs> have been in writers' rooms, and they are aware that a lot of times there are inappropriate jokes made and inappropriate topics. Yo, we, it, we're fine that, with that. It wasn't that. It was I'm never fine with that. that. We Dan. want, in fact, we actively want that in yeah. a writers' room yeah. full of adults. You should be saying wildly inappropriate shit if you're trying to write comedy, but like. Can we go back to the hot tubs? Come and up. Can yeah. we go back to how Amanda Bynes looks now? Better off dead. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, he was in the movie Better Off Dead. That was very good. Uh, but the fact that I participated in that, especially when I was leading the room, um, it embarrasses me. I shouldn't have done it. Um, and, and, and I can tell you. How did you get the chairs from Men in Black? Like, I'm trying to understand what this guy... And oh, I have, thought it was from the Starship Enterprise. It might be. Does he have just half a bicycle on his wall? I'm trying to understand the style here. Yeah, black guys what? usually steal a whole bike. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's only half black. It hurts really bad for me. Um, I remember very clearly my early experiences, my first experiences in the entertainment business. I w he's going to now make himself the victim yeah yeah i grew up around this kind of weird shit it's you yeah. know it was green i was this this is this is the most softball set up bullshit interview of i've course. ever seen hey dan come on our show we'll talk to you yeah let's talk here i was excited it, it meant the world to me that i was getting those opportunities and i went in and i got lucky because they were great my first couple of experiences were yeah we know you got lucky that's the problem fantastic and the fact that and the fact that I didn't pay that forward to every employee that walked through my door, yeah. it, it, it hurts my heart because I should have. And I wish I could go back and fix that. Oh, it um, which in is the writer's cool. room, oh. there's no doubt that sometimes those jokes went beyond the pale and I said things that went too far or made practical jokes that went too far. And um, that was wrong. And that, that was because... You know, like, you know, practical you know, joke, right? Like, all right, like every once in a while, like you ever do this one, right? Where you put your dick like over a doorway and you wait for a little kid to walk through, and then your dick falls into the kid. Yeah. You're like, ah, I got that. you. Yeah, yeah. Prank. So, I planked you. So Groucho Marx one. <laughs> You're so planked. You fucking. Oh, I hate this man. I yeah. hate this man. Impractical jokers, could you imagine? All right, all right, dude, dude, go suck on that kid's toes. <laughs> dude, go suck on that kid's toes. What? <laughs> Sal Volcano, relax. No, I was an inexperienced. Yo, yo, bro, tell tell her she'll get promoted if she fucking if she wears a bathing suit at the kids' <laughs> pool. Hey, tell her don't say anything or we'll both get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, yo, yo, this yo. new season is wild. So then I told the kid to walk in without shoes <laughs> for the audition. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make a make the kids' parents wait outside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna go be by the casting pool. Wait, why do you have a pool for? Wait, casting pool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're terrible people. Yeah, that's probably why they didn't put us in the documentary. <laughs> Producer, and somehow sure. not as terrible as Dan Schneider. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> Wouldn't happen today, but um, I'm just really sorry it happened. Yeah. Now we know you've had a lot of success.
Oh, now we're just going to go yeah. right into his resume. Yeah, at molesting children, allegedly. This is, I liked it. Now we're going, you've had so much success. Let's talk about some of your career highlights. We're three minutes into this. We're not even, not even three minutes in. And we're already like, tell us about some of your greatest memories from the business. Hey, why did you just disappear forever? This, it took two minutes and 52 seconds for this to turn into a fucking Dan Schneider retrospective. Yeah. Are they going to give him a lifetime achievement award after yeah. this, by the end of this? Yeah, Over they probably decades, are, actually. Thousands of people have worked with you for you. Okay. Let's speak directly to the people who did not have a good experience. With no, no, no. Good experience is not the. No, Royce, I have to say he's not wrong. Getting molested as a child is not a good experience. You're going to have a bad time. Yeah. If you pizza instead of French fries, you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> mm. uh, Turns see, that, out it, this... that, that was a double joke because it was a South Park reference and a pizza reference. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's, you get the highbrow okay. humor here, folks. I would folks. like to speak. If you pizza gate when you're supposed to French fry. <laughs> <laughs> to those people. Hey, by the way, everybody in the chat, could you do us a huge favor and do what Rumble isn't doing? Tweet us out. Maybe promote, yeah, promote, tell people we're talking about Dan Schneider. And then yeah. we've cracked the case wide open with Jim Caviezel. <laughs> Mel Gibson. Go into everyone's chats right yeah. now and say Jim Caviezel is teaming up with Revenge of the Sith. And then post our link. To sell Trump bobbleheads. Right. Do, me, do that and post our I link. I finally saw the Trump bobblehead. I, you by thought the way. it was good, right? It was, he was telling me about it. I'm like, I haven't the seen great it. great bobblehead. Driving home. <laughs> first, first commercial. Stop using the Trump AI voice. It's too low energy. It doesn't <sighs> sound like Trump. No, it has to be more, we're really into it. I hate that anybody worked for me and didn't have a good time. You know me. You've been on my sets. Um, look, I've had some employees that have worked for me for 10 years, some more than 20 years. Yeah, one of them was, what was it, uh, but, Brian Peck. Uh, oh, yeah. He was one of those guys. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, Not everybody. Mm. There's a, still a significant number that didn't have a great time working for me. So my batting average isn't nearly high enough in that area. Um, and the way they wouldn't get the best of me is that I would let the pressure of doing 40 or even I more. am hoping. This is my hope. Mm -hmm. My hope is that all these women that didn't come forward after all these years are going to see this and go, this motherfucker. That's the only thing we have to rely on now is one of these bitches going, okay, you know what? I'm fucking done. I'm done, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? We need somebody who is a victim of this guy, allegedly, to be so enraged at this softball interview that he just gets fucking ruined. What about didn't Ariana uh, Ariana Grande Ice Latte work for him? She did, right? Yeah, she, yeah, was, she uh, was the one with the water bottle thing we played, right? Yeah. Dude, we covered a lot of this. It was fucking wild. This guy, look, yeah, she she Ariana Grande used to work for Dan Schneider when she was a white girl. Right now she's mulatto, oh, which yeah. is super weird. Weird, right? Yeah, episodes per year. I would let that pressure get to me, which a good boss should never, ever do. Were there specific things that you were doing? Sh sure, I would. Um, Are we? Could have shown you a better experience. I need all these jokes that you're. Uh, the more people who like the show, the happier I am. Wanted and have it air. Is, I, is, does yeah, he get to like anything? Not, uh, nope. Uh, being no. A father, I wouldn't be opposed of, to my child being in the entertainment industry. It doesn't matter what age, yeah? Seeing some of those on air dares. Seeing it now. From where you are no, now. No, no, no. Seeing it then. Seeing it then was weird. Seeing it like seven years ago when we covered this. This is, this is, this is. Changed it on the spot. Now, we also saw the series highlight two former writers of yours, two women, mm -hmm. who spoke about a wage discrepancy. Is that what they, I'm sorry, I haven't watched this whole documentary. Royce, Royce the wage gap is real. And if we don't do something about it. <laughs> Wait a second here. One second. I haven't watched this entire in investigation discovery documentary I yet. I bet you it's a softball, too. No, Nobody cares about wage discrepancies. This wasn't about that. This was about harming children. No, remember we did entire episodes about the, how the wage discrepancies. Is this what we're doing? Is this seriously the route? That, has anybody watched this documentary? I, I said I wouldn't want to watch it because it's just going to make me angry. I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'll watch it tonight and get uh, angry. I'll watch it tonight, yeah. You want to do a watch party tonight, Virgie? Yeah, we can do that. That'd be fun. We'll, we'll, we'll watch it and get angry for you. All right? And then we'll, we'll fill you in. You know, 
That's not the worst idea for a local special. I'm so fuck. Sorry. <laughs> he can't. He hasn't heard anything. It's like this scene in Private Ryan when the bombs go off and yeah. your ears are just. No, no, right, right. Royce is, Royce is fucking <laughs> Walt from Breaking Bad and he just found out he has cancer. <laughs> yeah, dude. Fucking nothing. It's the nothing Breaking is Bad. Permeating. It's the Breaking Bad. All I see is the mustard on your shirt and <laughs> the tinnitus kicking in. Just. <laughs> You know, we should actually watch it. We can watch that tonight on Nightwave. Don't really say anything we want later. Yes. We'll figure it out. <laughs> I know <laughs> that you don't divvy out salaries. Talk to me about that part. Well, you're correct. I have nothing to do with paying writers. I never have. I've never made We're a still on the deal. writers. And of all the writers... Yeah. I fast-forwarded like nine I've minutes. been in the writer's room with. I never even knew how much most of them were getting paid. Yeah, but we saw these two women... Who were writers for you sharing one salary? How does that happen? Oh, uh, they this were conjoined the twins. Oh, so legally speaking, they were one person. Yeah, they had one heart and one driver's we license. We pay based on a heart and one social security. Does that mean they go? Does that mean they get a ticket if they're in the high occupancy lane? No. Well, if they're one person, yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. Hold on, it's a Twitter video, so I have to. Like, it doesn't wait. work. Yeah, but this nigga's gonna terraform Mars somehow. Hey, it's Boogie. Boogie. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's the and same guy. Did your relationship with the cast? Yeah, it bothered me too. Yeah, just me being there, I knew the dynamic was. It was trust, trust. Rice. It was trust. Yeah, they could trust that so, he would come so on their so, feet. So you're if one they wore sandals. So Mr. You're, Black Man, I just want to let you know you're going to hell. So you're one of so let me get this straight. You're one of those people that goes, well, I mean, even though three children were molested at that school, I was never molested, so I can't imagine that they were was molested. This man is going to hell. Mm-hmm. I don't say that often. Maybe he doesn't like black kids. Did you think about that? I don't even say that often about bad people. But my God, this man is going to burn in hell. I understood yeah. that. This situation- shit is so bad, I now question whether or not that black guy fucked kids where they may right. have had turmoil, whether it be with their families, whether it no, be No, I think he's just a black guy that was... Uh, if you notice the black men, the black males that are in, like, these Disney, Nickelodeon shows, like, uh, who's the one from fucking That's So Raven? Orlando. Raven. Orlando something. Uh, somebody in the chat will know. Um, it's not Orlando Jones. They all end up either on drugs, strung out. They never end up getting work because they age into just being a black guy. Yeah, and there's plenty of black. Like, well, we we need Chad. plenty of black guys. We need Chadwick Boseman. We don't need you, fucking kid who works for this. We don't need you, Kel Mitchell. Yeah, we need just need Keenan. Just need Keenan. We don't need the rest of the. So whole. you don't need the black guy that played Cyborg in Smallville. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Orlando Brown. Thank you. But yeah, you're like, no, we just need Keenan. We don't need the rest of the good burger package. You know what I mean? So right. <laughs> we'll take the burger without the fries. So this is one of these guys that's had no career since. And this is his little way back in. They came to you versus how they made you look. With that, so this isn't an interview. You're just defending her. That said, Amanda Bynes was brought up in the series mm-hmm. and her emancipation and how you were involved in that. Can you talk to us about it a bit? Uh, this is going to be another softball. He's not going to even press back. Sure. Um, Amanda was between the ages of 16 and 17. And she wanted to get And, you know, when there's fucking, when there's grass on the field, you know what I mean? And she wanted to get parents, emancipated for a parent. Which is a fairly common thing with successful young actors, at least at the time. Sure. Um, and she wanted that for herself. So she turned to her team, which included her lawyer, her agent, her manager, her publicist, me, because she included me as part of her team, thought of me that way. We supported her. Why would the producer be part of an individual actor's team? She tried to get emancipated and ended up not working out. And she didn't. Well, since we're here, let's stay. You don't. He just said. What? Like it was a normal thing that a, yeah. a producer and a lawyer were helping a child become emancipated from her parents like it wasn't a problem. Well, I will say this. It is a little weird, but in Hollywood, some of these parents are predatory and they steal all the kids' money, you know, looking at fucking looking at you, Corey Feldman's parents. 
Uh, there's a lot of like that shit that goes on. 16, 17 is a normal age to seek emancipation if you're a big star. But the fact that he's involved is weird. That's my point. Like, if you have a lawyer and an agent and a publicist, and they're like, look, it'll be better for you if you insulate yourself, protect your money. But, like, if, if they came to me and I'm the producer and I'm basically, like, the patriarchal presence on this kid's show all the time, uh -huh. and they went, we want you to get involved. I'd go, hey, look, just for the sake of appearances... Leave me out of this one, man. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I'm not getting involved in that because that's going to look weird. Stay here for a moment. There was also an incident where she had ran away from home, if yes. you would. Um, can you talk to us a little bit just to clear the air of exactly what happened in that situation? Only oral. Oh, sorry. Oh, I got you. Uh, totally wrong. Oh, man. fuck. Sorry. Fuck. I didn't knock her up like Jamie Lynn Spears. Give me a fucking break Whoa, here. Whoa, fuck. This isn't live, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, one night, it was very late, well after midnight, one or two in the morning, phone rang, I answered, it was Amanda. She was upset. And he was, she was like, you up? She was in distress. She had had some conflict with her parents, I think her father, and she called me. I was immediately concerned about her safety. So call 911. I called someone who I knew was fairly nearby. That person was able to go and pick her up. Then I knew she was safe. I felt better. She ended up being taken to the police. Well, regardless of what some people may think, I think it's only positive that you are there for people when they need you. This is. He's on the floor. <laughs> we seven years. Let's fucking go. Seven years. Seven years. We, we covered this oh. for seven fucking Oh, I'm alive. Years. We covered this for... Put that down as my third stroke. Fucking <laughs> seven years we covered this fucking asshole. <laughs> and the first interview he does... <laughs> I love this! ...is with this... No, fuck that. I love this. I love this. Her father <laughs> and she called me. Oh fuck! I was immediately concerned about her safety. Oh, shit. I called someone who I knew was fairly nearby. That person was able to go and pick her up. Then I knew she was safe. I felt better. <laughs> she ended up being taken to the police. Well, regardless of what some people may think, I think it's only positive that you are there for people when they need you. Holy that shit, dude! Oh, he's the good guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can't fucking breathe. <laughs> Do you have your pen thing? Because uh, yeah. I can't even. I can't even fucking function right. I think I might have just had a stroke again. Wow. That's it. Yeah, Let's he talk just about some had somebody pick up a sixteen-year-old. Twirling. It's fine, forever. dude. This world rules. And the person he knew had probably <sighs> picked up so many sixteen-year-olds that it was just normal for him. You know what I mean? The only acceptable thing besides. Well, you should call the police would be if an underage person contacted you and said, whatever. The only alternative to that should be, I'll call the police. Right. You know what I mean? The only yeah. thing you should do. <laughs> I will call the police and they will go to you and you'll sort that out with them. They'll come, they'll shoot your dog, whatever they do. They'll vlog the paperwork. Well, leave me out of this. Okay. You were banned. It's weird that a 16 year old's calling you at two in the morning. <laughs> Why does the 16-year-old have your number? Because they're colleagues, and he's a positive force in her life. From your I, set. I, I, never, uh, never. You were banned from your set. Never, never happened. That is a false rumor. What happened? Add it to the list of false Talk rumors. Talk to me. What happened? They were. If all these rumors were so false, when the original allegations came out of seven years, why did Nickelodeon sever ties with you? You never said one fucking word until it finally got on a cable fucking documentary. Yeah. <sighs> Bro, if I had my whole contract canceled over people calling me pedophile on Twitter, I would have burned the whole company down. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ, if you had a nickel for every time every person was called a pedophile on Twitter. Jesus Christ. And they had their own specific reasons for not wanting to do the show anymore. Mm. I'm not judging that. It got tense. And what they what don't know... What were those know, specific maybe, reasons it, What are that the reasons, tense? Daniel? Mostly the... Fucking 400 pound adult man that was flopping on top of them like a fish all throughout their teen years. Is I did everything I could to make that show go away. My producer partner at the time, 
we would call and say, this is a, not a good situation. Okay. So I, I decided I'm going to do what most showrunners do, which is you're not on the set. There's a director there to shoot it. I'll go up to the writer's room. I'll work on the next script. But yeah. because everybody was so used to me caring about every detail of every show. He cares so much. That's the thing about Dan he cares Schneider. Much. I know. Dan, I want to apologize for our years of coverage about you. I just didn't realize that you cared so much. I think it's so positive that you were such a good influence in that. <sighs> so yeah. much. For me not to be on the set, yeah, maybe some people thought I got banned. So it was more of an assumption because this, this guy is worse than Dan Schneider. Th this this yeah. guy's worse than him. Oh, yeah. This guy's usually here, and now he's not. I don't know if it was an assumption. I don't know if somebody thought they were making me look bad by saying I got banned uh, from the set. I have no idea. Okay. All I know is. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. I that feel makes you, dog. Sense. Yeah. This feels yeah, like when. Uh, yeah. This feels like when Stephanopoulos gets to sit down with Biden. I was never he's banned like, from the set. What brand aviators? <laughs> You're like, dude. The whole country's on fire. Yep. The darkest part of this series was you, right? Discuss child predators. He's going to totally softball this. Too. We're going to throw the other four guys under the bus. Keep Dan clean on this. Now, I want to make sure that we clear a couple of we. things up. We. You see what I... But, like, he's not even hiding that it's... it's uh, in the I got your back, dog. I want to make sure that we are all on the same page here, that he is a good man. Okay. Brian Peck was not hired by you. We're just front lashing. This whole interview is front lashing. Yo, this is wild. No, I did not hire Brian Peck. This was a Tolan Robbins production? Why, how'd you know that? Yeah. And when Drake and I talked and he told me what had happened, I was more devastated by that than anything that ever happened to me in my career thus far. It happened to you. And... I told him, I'm here for you. What do you need? Which Drake to shut up. mentioned in the show that we watched last night. And next, I heard that he went. Which Drake mentioned in the show we watched last night. They probably sat there and watched together and mm -hmm. took notes. This isn't even just I'm going to cover for you. This was crafted. This whole thing. Court. Man. No well, wonder we're not involved in this fucking thing. It's all meant to repair and rehab his it's image. It's kind of what it looks Viacom's like. Viacom's in trouble. Nickelodeon's never recovered since they got rid of this guy. They probably want to bring this fucking guy back. And tried, Peck. And when yeah, Drake walked in, that's he's... what it's starting to look like, boys. He saw 50 people sitting on the Controlled side of the Controlled opposition yet again. Supporting Peck. A lot of them pretty famous. So you're saying 50 people were supporting Peck. A lot of them pretty famous. Just like this guy, these, there's a bunch of people supporting you, and a lot of them famous. Of course, Drake was devastated that that happened. And, and even more disappointing, 41 of those people wrote letters for Peck, character letters, praising him for who he was and asking for leniency, and they knew that he was guilty. They knew he had confessed to some degree, mm -hmm. and they still did this. What does that say about everything, then? Bro, this is... is... Yeah. It's just, that's baffling that adults would do that. Yeah. And I don't know if people know this, but Drake's mom, a lovely woman, who I stay in contact with this day. <laughs> okay, that's really funny. Boozer Brody. Dude looks like ripped horn from some young kid's ass. Yeah. Oh, she came no. to me at the time, <laughs> and she said, Dan, I'm not good with words like you are. And... Oh, no, we're getting the fake cry. Holy shit, he rehearsed this. I am... I, I, uh, you know what? This, let's just feel better, Royce. Let's be less angry now, because we were never going to be... In, this has nothing to do with politi politics. Politics. It has nothing to do with right wing, revenge of the cis, or any of that. We, this is a this is a full court press to rehab Dan Schneider's image that we were never going to be. Uh, we were always going to yeah. get frozen out. Of. Kind of what this feels like, right? 
Yeah, dude. This is this is they put that shit out on purpose so that they could uh, they had a reason to address it and get it out. Because if Dan Schneider just came back out of nowhere, you know what I mean? Would you it, help me? It would all would feel you? fucked up. Would you help me? What is he, Cody Rhodes now? You... Fake crying. Fuck I'm going to hand it to my mama. Hey, Dan, why did you tweet out that you want to see little kids' toes? Hey, Dan, why did you make make little girls audition with their shoes off, Dan? Are you going to hey, are you gonna ask him those questions? Pool parties, Dan. Hey. Hey, did they, that did, they, did they cover? That... I didn't watch the documentary, but did they cover the feet stuff in the documentary? Are we going to ask him about the feet stuff, about kids' feet stuff? Are we going to ask about him making Ariana Grani bukkake herself with a bottle of water? You remember Sorry. all those times that the Watch official Twitter tour. accounts for their shows mm -hmm. had them have uh, had little kids write hashtags on their feet yeah. and send in pictures? Oh, yeah. fuck you, Dan. And fuck this guy, too. With my speech for the judge. And I said, of course. And I did. Where are the tears? And he ended up going to prison. That's and why I said he's, he's Cody Rhodes crying. Bro, this and is so fucking egregious. Yeah, that was probably the darkest part of my career wow i have you ever seen someone recover crying so fast no it, no it's that very... was the quickest recovery i've ever seen and here's dan you fucked up kicker. you were a writer yeah, I, not an actor yeah you, ha you, you haven't flexed that muscle since mm. head of the class no Ooh. really don't get after he got out of prison and was to my knowledge a registered sex offender he was hired on a disney channel show yeah, I know. You got that information from our from our, our uh, show. You're welcome. Our show. Yeah. I, I, I don't understand that. Um, I know. Wow, he's completely shielding himself. He's throwing everybody under the bus. No, he's not shielding himself. There is a fucking organized campaign to shield this man. Never. Yeah. I don't understand. Yeah. I appreciate you sharing it, man. Are you okay? You I appreciate you. You want to open up, man? You want to take a break? You want a snack? I'm all right. Let's, let's keep going. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. This this feels like an interrogation where they're not trying to get a confession. It's like they brought somebody in, they think murdered somebody, but we're just going to buy you McDonald's. Well, no one's buying it. Oh, no, I know, but still. Yeah. Well, there you go, folks. Hold on, a little okay. bit more. I, I we, think we, we really impact some important things. We set the record straight on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Before I let you get out of here. Before I let you. Can I guess? Can I guess the next thing? You working on any future projects? You haven't been on the scene for a while. Where do you get your ideas? If there's a plug at the end of this. I appreciate the vulnerability that you use in knowing <laughs> that there's definitely things that you would have and should have done differently. Mm -hmm. None of the things that he would have should have done differently would get him you in trouble legally. What he did, wage gaps and... Huh. Is there anything that we haven't discussed? Anything that if you could go back and navigate the, the journey differently, what would that look like? Uh, Probably wouldn't be on Twitter. Um, yeah, there's definitely things that I would do differently. Um, one that I think would be really, really important is when you're hiring young actors, minors, to work Don't in television... Don't fuck them. I would suggest that we have a licensed therapist there to oversee that process. Right, and then what you do is you pay your therapist off to, to brainwash them those for kids. you and tell them, hey, you know it would be good? Emancipation would be yeah. good. We should do that. Yeah, I know you're right. Yes. For the specific reason of making sure that those kids really wanted to do this job, that yeah. they really wanted to be... Yes, you're right. The therapists that are getting paid by the studio are going to protect the children and not their paycheck. Oh, that was fun. Was that, it? That was eye-opening and enlightening. 